Hey, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up RPCS3, that's the PlayStation 3 emulator, correctly. So I'm going to be going through the installation process for the firmware itself, which is required in order to run games through RPCS3. I'm also going to be showing you how to install updates as well as DLC. And I'm also going to be showing you how to use the network through the emulator, which is RPCN, so you can play your PS3 games using the emulator, against other players around the world using the same emulator so we're going to need a few things for this we're of course going to need the emulator itself we're going to need the firmware and we're going to of course need a game and even an update or some dlc to go with it so first things first we're going to head over to the rpcs3 website and download this so download 64 bit and if we scroll downwards we're going to download the windows version as you can see this is nowadays available on linux as well as an experimental version for mac os so we're going to download support times 64 and like i was saying if you're new to playstation 3 emulation then we're also going to need the latest release of firmware for playstation 3 which is 4.92 and believe it or not this was actually recently added this year in 2025 can you actually believe that so what we're going to do is scroll downwards, update using a computer, and you can download the file just here very easily done. So on the desktop now, we've got the latest distribution of RPCS3, and we've also got the firmware file direct from the Sony website, which you should download as a ps 3 updatputt file. So what we're going to do first of all is create a new folder on the desktop. So right click new and down to folder. And we're going to call this PlayStation 3 or PS3 or even RPCS3. It doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do here is drag in the archive, which I've just downloaded from the RPCS3 website. I'm also going to drag inside that PS3 up that dot put file. So let's go inside of the PS3 folder. And if I right click on the package just here, I'm going to use WinRAR and extract it. So everything's going to come out what we need. And once that's been extracted, we can now delete that archive folder. So just delete that one. So inside so far, we got the emulator itself in all the files. And we've also got the firmware file, the PS3 up that dot pup. Now what we're going to do is take a look at games. So I've got a game here on my desktop and this is pure, a really awesome quad racing game. This is what the emulator is going to accept and this is what I recommend. This is known as JB Folder Games. So inside of your games, you should have a PS3 underscore game folder. And inside of here is roughly what we're going to see inside of the JB Folder structure PS3 games. So what we're going to do then is actually create a new folder inside of that PS3 folder containing the emulator, new folder, and I'm going to call this folder games. And if I go inside of that games folder, I'm going to drag that pure game inside and I'm also going to show you how to install updates as well as DLC like I mentioned just now. So we've got the game itself inside of the games folder as well as a package file which is an update for this game. So we're going to open up the emulator for the first time and you can double left click on rpcs3.exe at the bottom here. And here we go. So first thing I suggest doing is just creating a desktop shortcut so we don't have to go into this folder every time. We also want to disable show it start up, otherwise every time we open up the emulator we're going to see this and we don't want that, it's pretty annoying. We're going to go to I have read the quick start guide and then just go to continue. And here we go, so everything's here including my game and it's also saying that there is an update available for this particular game which I've of course got a package file of. Now, if we move to the bottom in the terminal just here, it says missing firmware. So what we need to do is take that PS3 up that dot put file, which is of course the firmware, and actually install it into the emulator. So to do this, we're gonna go to file. And if we scroll down to install firmware, what we're gonna do is look inside of that PS3 folder where the emulator is, because just a minute ago, I dropped that PS3 up that dot put in there. There we go, double left click. And we're now going to wait a couple of minutes for this to install. And we're also going to check this box, don't show again, and OK. Now, like I say, this can take a couple of minutes, even a few minutes, depending on the type of computer you've got and how fast your computer is. OK, 
Okay, awesome, and that's the firmware now installed. So next thing we're gonna take a look at is updating our game. So like I said just a minute ago, under version of Pure, we can see there's an update available for this, which is 01.02. And just a minute ago, I actually showed you that I had an update file for this, which I put inside of my PS3 games folder Here's the update file, and a good place to source these update files for PlayStation 3 games, it's just here on the website I'm using. So all I've done here is just typed in pure, and as we can see, we got the update file just here. This is awesome. So we also want to take note of the title ID. So if we take a look, we got two here. We got blee and we got blue, and both of these also have different digits in. So we're going to go back to the emulator itself, and if we take a look at the serial number here, we can see that it says blee, then it ends with 327. So I've got the update file for this, which is the same, blee, and then ends with 327. So we're going to install this update for the game pure, and we can do this as well as adding DLC, just go to file, and what we're going to do is go down to install packages, wraps, edats, and from here, that's going to take me to my PS3 folder, I'm going to go into my games folder, and here is my update package, so double left click, and we're going to select yes for this to install this package. And whilst we're here, we can also add this to our desktop. So rather than going into the emulator to play games, we can actually create shortcuts these days with RPCS3. So I'm going to check add desktop to shortcut and I'm going to go to OK. Successfully created shortcut. And there we go. So if we go back to the desktop, here is my game. So let's actually quickly test this. If I boot up Pure directly from the shortcut, and here we go. Now, if you're new to PlayStation 3 emulation, every time you boot up a new game using this emulator, you're going to go through this compiling PPU modules process. Rest assured, it's literally a one-time process every time you load up a new game using this emulator. So some games are going to be quicker than others. And also, once the game boots up the first time round of playing it, you will notice in the bottom left-hand side of the screen, it will say compiling shaders. And your games will initially seem very laggy. So after playing the game a couple more times, you'll notice that those compiling of shaders then goes and your game becomes more fluid. But I'm going to show you that with this gameplay footage as soon as this one loads up. Okay, so we're just going to shut that down, and as I mentioned just a minute ago, and as you likely seen just there, on the bottom left hand side it would have said compiling shaders. But of course, we still need to set up a controller to actually play this game. So rather than open up the shortcut for the game, we're going to open up RPCS3. And what we're going to do just here is if we just expand this or maximize the GUI, we're going to go to pads. And I've got Xbox controller connected to my computer. Now under handlers, I'm going to drop this one down to X input because that's for my Xbox controller. And you'll now notice that under devices, X put pad number one is now highlighted and that's working fine. Now automatically your buttons should configure by doing this. If they don't, then you can manually map your controller. If I left click on D-pad up for example, and then press up on my Xbox D-pad. As you can see, that's now mapped out for me. Now what I'm going to do is just go down to save. And if I open up the game again. And I'll tell you what, this time round, we're actually going to make this game open up in full screen. If I right click on the game, we're going to go down to create custom configuration from global settings. And if I go over to the emulator tab on the right hand side. We're going to find just here under emulator settings, start games in full screen mode. If I check this one and just make sure to apply and save custom configuration. Okay, so now we've done that and the controller's added, we can now use the shortcut and this should now boot up into full screen. So I'm going to give you an example of compiling shaders in this game. The first race I make around the track which I'm going to play, it's going to appear laggy. But the more I play the game, those compiling shaders are then going to disappear. 
And we're going to create a save file. And let's just remember our PS3 is literally emulating everything with PlayStation 3. So when we save games, just like a real PlayStation 3, it truly believes it's a real PlayStation 3 it's dealing with. And so save files are going to be just like a real PlayStation 3. allows you to get around the track faster by launching your ATV into the air. Slam the left stick down, then quickly flick it up just before you leave a jump. Preload now! Nice air! You should preload every chance you get. Now find yourself a jump and get some air, then press the X button and a direction on the left stick to pull a trick. Trick now! Yeah, that looked awesome. Okay, and as we can see, as I was going around that lap on the second and third time, those compiling shaders were beginning to disappear and the gameplay became much smoother. Now, let me also remind you that there's particular RPCS3 games which will need some tweaking in order to run them correctly. And I'm going to show you how to do this. And the easiest way to do this is just by typing into your web browser, RPCS3 Pure, for example. And we should find at the top just here a wiki for this. If we go inside, of here this wiki page for this particular game using rpcs3 looks like it doesn't actually need any specific settings but if we was to play the game motor storm pacific rift if i go inside of this wiki page and we go downwards we can see that this particular game is going to need some particular configurations for it to run correctly under gpu configuration for example and even some settings to need adjusting in advanced configuration so if you happen to have a game which doesn't run correctly then to do this once we're inside of the rpcs3 emulator by right clicking on the game that you're looking for to run correctly just go down to change custom configuration and we can go under settings just there and change settings from the CPU to GPU and so on. So there's lots of different options just there. Now for a game like Pure, which is fine on default settings, we can even change the default resolution if we wanted to. And we also got a resolution scale, which by default for this game should be set at 720p. If I drag this slide up, we can actually upscale it to 1080p. Now, some games will work fine by upscaling, some won't. I've not tried this one yet up until now. So, just like everything else we do, we need to hit apply, save custom configuration. And if we boot this game up again with those new video settings applied. And as we can see, it also automatically loaded up my save settings from the last time I played that game. So finally for this tutorial, some people have asked me in the past, can we actually play online or play multiplayer using the RPCS3? Well, yes, we can have actually covered this in a little bit more depth in a previous video, which I'll link in my comments section. But very briefly, you do this very easily by going up to configuration. If we go down to RPCN, we're going to create account. And just here under server, we're going to make sure official RPCN server is selected here and not the test server. What we're going to do next is go down to create account. And from here, we can either use the username. And as we can see, we got a username already made for us. Or we can actually customize this and change it. So if I just type in just Jamie, for example, go to OK. And we also need to enter a password we go to OK, the next thing we need to do is actually pop in an email address. And what's going to happen after doing this is that the RPC entity are going to email you a code. And once you get that email, you simply pop in your code and that's pretty much activated your online experience with RPCS3. But like I say, for a dedicated guide on RPCN, then check out the video in the comment section.
And that's it for today's RP Cespri setup. So hopefully I've got you up and running with your classic PlayStation 3 collection. And of course, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. Anyways, until next video, stay retro.